my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. How do you just keep playing like that? How do you, that was such a mystery to me. Like I could learn some techniques and scales and sequences and licks and all of these things. But, but when would that ever come together into something that just, you know, I could just keep playing or I could play a run that I, I didn't have to stop at some certain point. I could just keep playing. I'm just developing my run and, you know, move around the fretboard like that. And, and my fingers were just cooperating. And I didn't have to stop anywhere because I could just, you know, I could just do whatever I wanted. That was just, ah, oh, that would be so, that was the red Ferrari for me, right? That, that would be so amazing. Uh, like an explosion of pleasure if I could do that. So that was a huge thing for me, <laughs> as you can, uh, as you know by now. Um, but so I asked myself, how can I learn that? Because I refuse to have this idea that, oh, you just learn some stuff in each area of guitar playing and then suddenly magically you can do that. Because it didn't look like I could do that. It didn't look like everything would come together. So I developed a specific way of going about it by asking myself, okay, what is this really? What is this skill really? Well, first of all, if you can take it down to the most minimum challenge, let's not move at all. Let's say it's the ability to stay in one place on the neck first in any six note shape and then combine little sequences like say I can do that's one sequence right and then and then I perhaps I could go or I could go Right? Whatever I could play in there, could I do just a little, you know, a little sequence, combine it with another, learn another sequence, and then combine it with the first two, and then develop in that little six note shape the ability to just, you know, just play all kinds of stuff, like combining sequences like that, where I didn't have to stop, and I could start playing. You know, I could just stay in one place. Well, then the next step, if I could learn to do that, I could have my fingers just sing and dance and do all kinds of sequences, combine them with each other, uh, and my I could teach my fingers to move in all these little patterns. Then could I then learn to move that six note shape to other six note shapes? And thereby I could start creating runs, right? Then suddenly I could take that little movable thing, those sequences that I can combine, I can move them horizontally, you know, on two strings. And then could I then learn to also move them vertically, like, and go to the next set of strings. Then I actually had a little, a little entity there that I could move back and forth horizontally and vertically. And as I wasn't really playing a string of notes, but rather had that little movable entity, like me, a little moving around on the fretboard, then I wouldn't be forced to stop anywhere. Because basically I have my own little world here and that I'm moving that world around. So I change the pitch of the notes and the audio of the notes I play by going vertically on the fretboard or horizontally. Then I had a system that I could actually relate to and I could start practicing sequences within the little six note shape and combining those sequences. And then I could practice moving them around. And if I could then, you know, come up with say like four sequences that I could combine in one six note shape on one place, 
and then I could practice moving them around. Then I had a specific step-by-step -step way of practicing having that freedom that I so longed for. I hope this makes sense. Because instead of it being a random process, well, I can play this thing, you know, play that run, and I can play this run, and, you know, that old Paul Gilbert thing I learned, then, and then what, what, the, what do I do with that? How would I, okay, here's my solo. Um, and I was, I, I always had to pre-learn everything or practice everything, so everything had to be composed because otherwise I wouldn't know when to start and stop things, especially not when there, there was speed involved, right? But in this way, I actually started from the inside out, practicing that ability to being able to improvise at a rapid rate, as rapid as I could play stuff, right? Because I wasn't, I wasn't, you know. I could create my own runs now, and I can stay in one place. Like, I didn't have a car that had to stop its engine every time I, you know, I could just keep rolling, even if I wasn't moving anywhere. Right? So I could just go... Right? And then I could practice ending and beginning my stuff in that little six-note shape. They would, this is a genius system. Sorry, I say the system is genius, not the author of it or the inventor of it, but it's genius at, for the simple reason that it's actually an observation of what actually goes on when people at the highest level are doing this. What's going on there? They're not playing pre-composed runs. If you look at, you know, Bonamassa, what is that his name? I don't know how to pronounce anything these days. But <laughs> Joe, the blues player, he, he does these tune up a string, cool things, and, and he, you know, he doesn't have to stop it anywhere. Um, and, and that's exactly what goes on. It's that ability to well, go back and forth between different patterns, different shapes, because the brain can't think in, or produce single notes that fast and improvise putting notes together. So it, if you give it patterns or sequences that you can then put together, then it can do it. It can do da 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 and put them together with smaller and smaller distances. So you play only two or three notes from one sequence, then two or three notes from another, and then suddenly you have, you have ultimate variety in what you play, even when you're playing fast. And that whole philosophy of learning uh, to play sequences, I call the power lick philosophy. Because instead of learning a lick that's basically just a pre-composed uh, little series of notes, you're learning something that is moldable, that you can mold and shape like you want, and then you can take it around the fretboard, end it and begin it through different shapes. Um, and we can even do that with our patio shapes as well. When we have these 212 shapes that we, that we turn into 313 shapes, then we can start creating power licks within that as well. So we can do modal stuff, that, like we talked about a couple of videos uh, previously. And, and it just is the most, and again, because how do you focus? You know that the most important thing is focus in your practice regimen. If you can use focus, you can achieve things a thousand times the rate of, of the, people, the person next to you. But how do you focus? And the Paolic philosophy is the how. Is the how do you do that? Do you want to practice this run or this one or this sequence or this sequence? Bam! Down to the Paolic philosophy. Practice these four sequences in these combinations and then build from the core out. That's focus, right? Core. Build from the core out instead of, you know, practicing all kinds of stuff in the peripheral. And then you never get to the core. You never get the ability to combine everything inside out instead of outside in, right? And when people are able to do this, this is what actually happens if you look into the, 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 the systematic way in which this, uh, and, and yeah, it's, just, <laughs> it's an amazing process. Um, so I'd like to give you uh, a couple of suggestions here uh, to start developing your own power league, just to, you know, just the simplest of stuff here, you know. If you take a six note, just to, to keep things to a, a level where the sequence is so simple it doesn't interfere with the explanation, if you just do a six note shape down, and as I said before in the previous videos, you can go to guitarmastery.net and download, watch this video and along with other videos like this, uh, online stream them and download them and download the tabs as well. 
Um, it's a little mini program there. So go register right now and, and download the tabs and watch the next se uh, section of this uh, video up there on the internet. Um, so I take any six note shape, and this is just within the diatonic shape. Let's just play six notes up, right? That's a sequence of notes, right? It's just the simplest of all, right? And I'm just going to play them down again. Right? And then I'm going to do another sequence. I'm going to take a just a six note up and return to the first note again. And instead of going back, I'm just going to play. So now I have two different sequences. We're not going to do four, just these two. So what I would do now, I would practice these two sequences over and over again. First the one, this is focus. Right, using any kind of technique I want. Hammer on some pull off, whatever it is. And then I would practice combining them step two. Two, two instances of the first sequence, then two of the next. Then I would bring them closer and just one instance of each. Right, so da da do da 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 just to keep it very simple. You can add more sequences in there. You can turn them around and make sure they mirror each other as I do in every power league I create. Uh, but then you can start saying, okay, how do I move this around? And in this case, it's very basic. It's very simple because I can simply just move this to another position. In the first instance, I was in the ninth, the 10th and the 12th fret on both the D and the G string. In this case, I'm moving down to the next position within the uh, C major scale. So I'm in the 7th, the 9th, and the 10th fret on both the D and the G string. So I would now practice playing the first sequence in both positions. So I would go uneven amount of notes. Then I'll practice the other sequence and moving that back and forth, right? And then I would practice both, like combining them. Right, the two just next to it, and then do the same thing. And notice I'm staying in the same two positions, not to make things, you know, don't take on a lot of stuff at the same time. Make sure your brain can focus on one learning one thing instead of also learning scale shapes or fingerings as it's trying to master this. Right? So let me now split them up. So I play one sequence here, and then the next sequence in the other position. Right? And then I can... Right? Suddenly I can move vertically now, or horizontally, sorry. Then I'm going to investigate, how can I move that to the top two strings? So I can just take the first sequence or the second sequence, like those six notes, and just move them up, right? Then I'm up here, so I could go. And then I can, you know, up here I could play. So I'm putting the puzzles, uh, the pieces of the puzzle together and see how do they fit when I'm going from one vertical position to another and one horizontal. Simply making that puzzle complete so I can, you know, piece it together. And I practice this now. Now I'm practicing going vertical. How could I then move back again? 
Well, let's see. Okay, so I'm in this first sequence. Right? I'm going back again. So what if I went all the way back to the to the first position again? So I went. Right? So, so now I can I can go in two directions. Now I can also, you know, once I'm up here, I can start moving horizontally again. I can practice all the position. Right. Down and up next. So now I have a way to move horizontally back and forth, and I can move vertically. I can go all the way down to the bottom strings, of course, and move back and forth like that. So I have my little combination. I'm moving it horizontally, moving it vertically, and bam, I have a power leak that I can use to improvise fast drums or slower. And this is just two so basic sequences, so simple. Uh, that we, you know, can focus on what we're really talking about here. But when you start really having cool, complex uh, uh, combinations, and you take four different sequences that mirror each other and really fit together like pieces of a puzzle that just goes click, then you get some real power. And that's the power leak philosophy. So go download the tabs here and start using this way of thinking, of always saying, okay, I need focus here. I need to say, okay, what is this really about? How do I get to the core of this and practice the core? Create a little loop that I can go over and over and over again with everything I do on each and every step of what I practice. Do little loops. Practice them with the metronome. Then uh, once they're automatic and you do everything right without thinking about it, then get in the thousands of repetitions and you can take anything to the highest level of mastery, world class level and beyond. I promise you, everyone can. It's just mechanics. There's no magic in it. It's just the body's amazing ability to adapt to anything you give it. If you do it enough times and if you have the ability to take the challenges and encapsulate them into one or two or three little loopable exercises that you can do so many times that the body can't stop doing it all the time, right? Uh, so it becomes an automatic spasm. So have fun, go to guitarmastery.net, download the tabs here and start practicing this. But please focus on the philosophy of what we're talking about here and not so much the actual notes. See what you can do with this uh, and start thinking in this way of taking something having stationary combinations of it and then moving it around through the different positions and practicing it in little loops all the way. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.